Good morning. Welcome to everyone to our contemporary service. It's a beautiful day out there, a beautiful fall day. Well, let us rejoice and be glad and let us lift our voices in praise to our wonderful Heavenly Father. Let us stand and sing, Who You Say I Am. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love. child of God this morning. Thank you. 
Blessed be your name. Amen. Amen. Will you stay standing as we confess what we believe about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit? Let's pray together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May you be seated. Good morning. Good morning, church family. It's good to see everyone that's at home. I hope you're enjoying it. What a day. How many good days can we have in a row? I mean, 60, sunny, 65 and sunny, 55 and sunny. What a wonderful time. In your bulletins, you should see uh, for announcements your fall grow offering. I guess in the past, we've given out green envelopes. If you want a green envelope, they should be on the back of the table. You can pick one up. Uh, today's the day we were trying to collect that. If you haven't done it and you need a green envelope, pick one up on the way out. And if you're going to do it by check or on the computer, just put in fall grow offering. We'd appreciate that. We have an event coming up next Saturday that the young adults are sponsoring, and we have Bree that's going to take it away. I had to beat up Mike last week because he completely forgot to mention the revival that we are less than a week away from. It's going to be on Saturday, and it starts at 5.30, and I've had a lot of questions about what exactly it is, and I couldn't quite answer up until this past week. So, it is. There's going to be about four speakers. We got Ryan coming, and then me and Blake are going to be up here for a little bit. And then we have another speaker who's going to talk about her experience in heaven. And then we have Julie Nettle coming. Um, and then there's going to be a lot of singing and a lot of worship. Um, probably the most un-Presbyterian thing this church has seen. Um, so get ready. It's going to be a lot of fun. And if you guys want to come join us, you're more than welcome. Uh, masks will be wear worn and social distancing will be advised. So um, come join us at 530 next Saturday. Thank you, Bree. That's very exciting. Very, very exciting. And how long is it going to last? 
That's, now, that's not very Presbyterian. We always like to know when it's going to start. We like to know when it's going to end because I want to know what time to make my reservation at the restaurant. So you're saying it could start at 5.30 and go till 6? Nine? <laughs> Is there food? Light refreshments? Well, let's come and encourage the young adults. I can't wait to hear what Blake has to say. I know he's going to bring it. Right, Blake? Oh, yeah. I mean, the young adults are getting me excited around here. So thank you, young adults and young adults that are at home uh, listening. You, if you were here last week, you received a JKPC Vision and Goals 2020 and beyond. If not, there should be one on the table. If there's not one on the table, we'll find some more to put on the table. What we've done is we've had asked all of our elders to put together their goals and we've asked all the staff members to put together their goals so you know uh, what everyone's trying to accomplish in the next year. And so every Sunday, if you look at your bulletin, it says congregational communication. One person, either an elder or a staff person, is going to share what God's put on their heart to do with us and for us. And so we thought, who better than Angela to be the first staff person to come up and share? Come on up, Angela. We know that you would lead us the way. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Mike. I'm Angela Rose, and I'm the Director of Worship and Music Ministries here at John Knox Presbyterian. My goals are listed on the back of this brochure that Mike just mentioned, and I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to kind of highlight the ones that are on my heart this morning. Um, my number one goal is that we would have a worship culture here at John Knox. What does that mean? Well, my passion is for worship, and some of you have been so gracious and written emails and sent me cards telling me that you see my love and enthusiasm for the Lord Jesus Christ, and I am so glad that that is evident. My desire is for John Knox to be an enthusiastic tabernacle of praise. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that we have to run around with tambourines and uh, wave our hands in the air and be wild? No, not necessarily, but Remember King David in the Bible, it says that he danced mightily before the Lord and all the people of Israel. And God was very pleased with that. And he said, David is a man of worship. He's a man after my own heart. Jesus warned us that in the last days that there would be a great falling away and that many hearts would grow cold and apathetic. That's a big criticism of the churches today. Many have just grown apathetic. They're what Jesus calls lukewarm. And he said that he would spew out the lukewarm from his mouth. So I don't know about you, but I don't want to be spewed out. So I ask today, how can we be on fire for the Lord and not be lukewarm? We're going to be exploring that question. Secondly, I'd like us to talk about who might be sitting out there in the pews that has some talent, mm. some musical talent. I mm. heard a booming voice this morning at the first service. I'm like, why isn't that man singing for us or in the <laughs> choir? And I heard that his whole family is musical. So we'd like to uh, recruit some of those people. We need some singers in the chancel choir. We need some instrumentalists for the praise band. We could use a bass player, um, maybe another singer or two when people are absent or out of town. Well, maybe you don't want to commit every week. Okay, I understand that. Um, so maybe you could just come and do a solo for us, like Allison Kovac and her friend Shane did one week. Shay, I'm sorry, not Shane, Shay. Um, they played their clarinets, and it was a beautiful duet. So we're open to inviting anyone that, you know, would like to come and perform. That would be fantastic. Use your talents for the Lord, and don't think that your talents are not enough. In our morning service during the prayer of confession, it's funny that it said this today, some hold back their talents, afraid these gifts will not be enough. Well, yes, you need some musical talent, but you don't have to be a professional, okay? So please see me if you would be interested in sharing your talents with us. Lastly, I will just mention the need to update our sound equipment. I know in the past few weeks you've heard a lot about that, so I'm not going to go over all the details. But I just want to say that 
Our sound equipment is not just for the chancel choir and the traditional or the praise team for the contemporary service, but it's for every event that happens here in the sanctuary. And it just enhances our worship experiences knowing that we have adequate sound equipment. So I hope uh, today is the fall giving and I hope you will give generously today to help make this all possible. Thank you so much and may God bless you. Thank you very much, that's exciting. If you look at your sheet, we're gonna spend a little bit of time in prayer. It's your sheet that's in your bulletin that talks about prayer requests. What I thought we would do is we could begin with silent prayer. We probably all have things that are on our hearts and that have happened to us this week or today. Then I will take some time to uh, praise and make supplication and then we'll close together as a family with the Lord's Prayer. Let's go to the Lord with our silent prayers. God, we thank you for the young adults, their enthusiasm and their spark of love and fire to come together and sing to you and praise you and to thank you and to invite people to share their personal testimonies of how you've touched their lives. So we lift up the service next Saturday. Will you bring people to come and worship together? We are so happy to hear that Mike and Lori Skurjantz have been blessed with the grandchild number 10. Blake Alexander Skurjantz, we pray for their family and that young man that he would be a man after your own heart. We thank you for Dem Demetrius Booker that is much, much improved. We thank you that we were allowed to pray for Demetrius for months and months. We thank you that John Quinn's out of the hospital. We thank you that our children are coming back and our families feel safe enough to bring their young ones to junior church. We thank you that our church's finances are healthy. We do lift up Caleb and his family, Lord, and he, he, the loss of his father. Not lost, but his father has gone to heaven to be with you. But we do pray for their family as they miss him here on earth. We thank you that Kathy's sister got through surgery this week and that she is recovering. We're just so thankful for that and continue to be with Faye Cook as she experiences covid and help Sue Gibbons and anyone and everyone that we know that is fighting that dirty disease called cancer. Lord, we pray for strength for them, for healing for them, for wholeness for them. We also lift up Charlie Tepsik as he goes through therapy to learn how to walk without a big toe. We thank you for the beautiful flowers here that are in the sanctuary uh, in behalf of the McElroy family. Lord, we have so many things to be thankful for, but we do lift up our country. We lift up anyone that has COVID, that's dealing with COVID, that is treating people with COVID. Protect them, encourage them, strengthen them. Lord, we look to our upcoming elections. Help us to be people of peace and not hatred during this upcoming election, knowing that you are always Lord be with us as we pray the prayer that you've taught us the Lord's Prayer our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Listen to a thousand tongues, but there is one that sounds above them all. The Father's song, the Father's love, you sung it over me and for Eternity is written on my heart. Heaven's perfect melody, the Creator's symphony, you are singing over me. The Father song heaven's perfect mystery the king of love has sent for me and now you're singing over me the father's song I have heard so many songs, listened to a thousand tongues, but there is one that sounds above them all. The Father's song, the Father's love, sung it over me and for eternity it's written on my heart heaven's perfect melody the creator's symphony now you're singing Father's song, heaven's perfect mystery, the king of love has sent for me, and now you're singing over me, the Father's song. Thank you, Derek. Let us go to the Lord in prayer as we dedicate our tithes and offerings. Father, as we travel about and we see the farmers harvesting the, the bountiful grains, the, the wonderful harvest that you provided to them, reminds us that you have provided us everything that we need. Not only the, the finances and the food, but the, down to the very air that we breathe. We thank you, Lord, that you've done this, that you think of us so much, that you love us so much, that you provided that for us. We ask that you bless the, what we return to you, that it may further your kingdom and allow others to know you better. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. At this point, I'd like to invite all the children who feel comfortable coming up to come up here with me. Miss Alea, not yet? Okay. Good morning, Henry. Good morning, Brooklyn. It's great to have you up here. Good morning, church family. Good morning, children and family at home. It's great to be here with you. 
Oh, I don't know if I can carry these this morning. I'm kind of tired. Oh, these are so heavy. Does anybody have a guess what these are, Henry? Chains. They're chains? You're right. These are chains. And I am going to chain. Oh, Cole, you get the most heavy ones because you're the oldest. Here you go, Henry. Oh, Brooklyn, I didn't forget about you. Here you go. Your chain. Those are so heavy. Did you guys do anything to deserve to be all chained up this morning? No? Did you do anything, Brooklyn? I, I you know, I don't think you did. Cole, did you do anything? No, nope. but guess what? I'm going to chain them up anyway, and they've got to stay like that. So today's children's message is called Blessed to be Persecuted. And you are persecuted when you're righteous. Does anybody know what righteous means? Henry, do you have a guess? No. No? Cole, a guess what it means to be righteous? Um, to, like, love God and to be right. To love God and to be right? To be right with God? So we are righteous when we confess our sins to Jesus, and then we try to be Christ-like. We know that we can't be perfect like Christ, but we try to be Christ-like. And then when we're not perfect, then we confess our sins to Jesus. Now, I was talking about persecution because we're blessed to be persecuted. But do you know what being persecuted means? Anybody know what persecuted? No? Guess what, Brooklyn? I am persecuting you right now. Henry, I'm persecuting you. Cole, what's it mean to be persecuted? To be punished in some way. To be punished in some way. I'm punishing these poor kids, and they did nothing wrong with these chains. But to be persecuted is when we are teased or we're harassed or we're treated poorly because of what we believe, because we believe in Jesus. Hmm. It's not fair, but that's what happens. But I said we're blessed to be persecuted. Do you feel blessed right now with these chains on you? Yes. Yes? Okay. We are blessed to be persecuted because we go through these trials and tribulations for Jesus. We get to go to heaven. And there is nothing that is so bad in this world that could happen to us that would make heaven not worth it. Now, every Christian at one point should have been teased, harassed, made fun of, some sent to jail, punished in some way because of our belief in Jesus. And if you haven't, then you might not have been bold enough following Jesus that we need to do more, basically. What could you guys as kids do to boldly follow Jesus? Henry, what can we do? Mm, I don't know. You don't know? What can we do to follow Jesus? What do you do now? Brooklyn, you have an idea? No? Cole, help me out. What could we do to boldly follow Jesus? We could send letters about our belief to, like, Jamaica. And oh, we could God. have pen pals with Jamaica and talk about our beliefs. Okay, I talked in the first service. We could pray before lunch. We could maybe play with somebody at recess that doesn't have friends to play with, right? Maybe somebody is different or new to the school. We could help show them around or make sure they have someone to sit with at lunch. These are all things as kids that you guys could do to boldly follow Jesus. And to do that, we are blessed with eternal life in heaven. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we get to learn about you and worship you. We thank you for the children up here, Lord, and that they have a passion for you and a desire to get to know you better. We pray for those who persecute us, 
because we love you, Jesus. We also pray for those that are being persecuted because they want to spread your word. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right, you may follow me to junior church or go back to your parents. But you must wear those all day. Today's scripture comes from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil, evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. From chapter 27, verses 45 and 46, from noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, and about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Ali, Ali, lema sabachthani, which is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the darkness, we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory. To a cradle in the dirt
ABC, that was wonderful. Thank you, praise team. Beautiful. I've never heard that song. It was beautiful, though. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We do praise you, Father. We do praise you, Son. And we do praise you, Holy Spirit. We come today and we thank you for our lives on earth, your death on the cross for our salvation of our sins, and your promise of eternal life forever and ever. We thank you that your word says there will be no more tears and no more sorrow and no more suffering when we get to heaven. Be with us. Strengthen us as we're here today for our journey on earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. My question to you this morning is, have you ever asked, which I think you probably have, or why, God, are you allowing me to suffer? Maybe if you're not asking it exactly right now, you might have asked it in a season in the past. God, I'm your child. I've given you my life. Why, if I'm your child and you're the good, good father, the song that's very popular, why would you allow one of your children to suffer? We as humans really wouldn't do that to our children, would we? Would we really allow our children to suffer? We would probably do everything we can to help them not suffer. So it's this paradox that we live in, this side of heaven, So I want us to think about that today. This sermon series called Suffering Servants. This is the third part. Last next week will be the last. Is talking, we've been talking about other people suffering, a lot of them Christians in Iran and other third world countries. But today I want us to think about our suffering. Because we are Christians also. If you have suffered or are suffering for Jesus, I want you to know that you are in good company. It's always nice to have company. In our first scripture today, in Matthew, we call it the Sermon on the Mount. It was part of that sermon. Jesus had come from heaven, had grown up, was baptized in the Jordan River. The Holy Spirit came upon Jesus to strengthen Jesus for Jesus' public ministry, and right after Jesus had been filled with the Holy Spirit to be strengthened, what happened? God allowed the devil to take him out into the wilderness, and he was tempted or slash tested for how many? 40 days and 40 nights. How many of you have been tempted or tested or someone bugged you after a day or two, how would you like to be hangry and not eat for three days and then have them bug you? We wouldn't do too well, would we? So Jesus, 40 days, 40 nights, gets tempted over and over and over again. And the Bible says that Jesus won the victory by quoting God's word. That was how Jesus got the victory over being tempted in his life. Jesus, after that, he was walking through the area of Galilee. All these people were following him, and Jesus went up on a mountainside. So it's called sermon or message, whatever you want to call it, on the mount, the mountainside. And he had his people sit down, his followers, and he said, if you're going to continue to follow me, Here are some things that you need to understand. And then Jesus said these words and other words, but he said, Blessed are you when people revile you, persecute you, and utter evil things falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. This is a sermon topic. Rejoice and be glad. Your reward is in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets 
who were before you. Interesting, how would you like that? How would you like when you're in the most critical trial of your life, Jesus appears and says, rejoice and be glad. Your reward is in heaven. What would you say to Jesus? Really? Suffering for Christ is the highest form of discipleship. Suffering for Jesus, thanking God, rejoicing in suffering is the highest form of discipleship on earth. I want to tell you today about a man named Andrew. Andrew spent two years in a prison in Turkey when he had been charged with espionage for trying to overthrow the Turkish government. Andrew was frustrated with God and himself. He was disappointed in God because God was allowing him to suffer so much while remaining silent when he needed God the most. Andrew said this, I felt at times such a sense of dislocation and there were times when I was wondering what is real and what isn't real. I could feel myself just slip over a barrier, slip over it. I am going over into a place I know is insanity and feeling it. Feeling myself going over the edge and just pulling myself back. My fear was that one of those times I wouldn't be able to pull myself back. Have you ever suffered and thought you were going to be insane? Has, have you had mental pressure to the point where you thought you were literally going to lose your mind? I have. One day I'll share that with you. But you might be saying, why would you allow me to suffer God? I mean, maybe you got a diagnosis of having cancer. Maybe you got a diagnosis, you're having symptoms of having pre-Alzheimer's, early stage. Maybe your spouse died of 40 years or 50 years or 60 years, and you're like, God, I needed them, right? Why would you take my spouse from me? We've served you all of our life. They're the strong one. I'm the weak one. Why didn't you take me? Why am I here by myself? Maybe you lost a child during pregnancy. Maybe you've been sexually abused, a victim of rape, even by your own mother or father. I knew a gentleman in high school that was abused by his mother sexually all the years he was growing up. Maybe your spouse asked for a divorce or maybe your family is having serious discord. Well, if you've suffered in any of these ways, I want you to know that you are in good company. See, Jesus suffered. If we are followers of Jesus, Jesus said, sit down on the mountainside. And if you want to continue to follow me, I'm going to tell you some things in advance that are going to happen. You know what I love about Jesus Jesus always told the truth. Whether you liked it or you didn't like it, Jesus told the truth. Jesus said, my God. Now, Mike said the wonderful Greek version. I'm not going to try and repeat it. Great job, Mike. The, the interpretation was, my God, my God, why would you forsake me? Now, we know that Jesus lived his entire life, was spit on, was crucified, was tortured, 
Jesus went through more than any of us have ever gone through, but Jesus continued to go to the cross. Jesus knew he was going to die. Jesus took his disciples and said, I need you to pray with me. He was in such mental anguish, he sweated the capillaries and his forehead busted. Blood came out, and then Jesus was on the cross, and Jesus said to God, why, why? Have you forsaken me? See, I believe that that's the way we feel when God doesn't answer our prayers or we say, why, if you're such a good, good father, did my best friend die in a car accident? Why, God? Well, I want to talk for a second about different types of suffering. I want us to make sure we're talking about the same type of suffering because I can suffer, you can suffer from what I would just call bad choices. I smoked for 20 years of my life. Now, if I develop lung problems right now, can I blame God for my suffering? Absolutely not. So, number one, I can't blame God for my own sinful actions. Number two, what about if I have to suffer for bad choices of other people? How about bad choices of my parents? Well, my dad smoked all of his life, and when I was growing up, I lived in smoke. I lived in smoke for three-hour drives with the windows up, and he was a chain smoker. Now, if I get cancer because of my dad... Am I suffering? You know, the Bible says that generational sin goes down how far? To the third and fourth generation. I'll give you an example. My grandfather was an alcoholic. My dad was an alcoholic. I was an alcoholic. And then my son was an alcoholic. Fortunately, I by the grace of God, quit drinking. My son doesn't drink anymore. And his daughter is two. So see, she's going to be raised in a family that doesn't drink, if you will. See, that generational sin went down into my family to the fourth generation. But fortunately, but through Christ, it's been broken for my granddaughter. That might have happened to you. I know someone that shared with me that their father abused them sexually their whole life. So, see, we suffer from our own choices. We suffer from other people's choices. And then sometimes we suffer for other people. Have you suffered for someone else? How about I talked to a gentleman not long ago, and he said, I was going to retire at this age. But something happened, and I worked for 10 more years so my family could have this. I wanted them to have it. I suffered, or I worked for 10 more years so my family would be blessed. So Jesus suffered so you could be blessed. So the question I want to ask you today is, are you willing to suffer so someone else, in the name of Jesus, will be blessed. Andrew didn't have this great joy. Jesus said, whenever you suffer, you're supposed to have joy. But Andrew didn't have the joy. He said, although he knew God's grace was with him in prison, for much of the time, he said it was a, quote, unfelt grace. He didn't feel joy. He didn't feel God's presence. He didn't hear God's voice, and he couldn't understand why that God would allow him to stay in prison. See, Andrew had been a missionary in Turkey for 23 years, and all of a sudden, they arrested him and threw him in prison. He gave his whole life to be a missionary, and now he's in prison. But Andrew said, I had a spiritual breakthrough. In the midst of the spiritual darkness, Andrew said, I made a decision not based on emotions, 
But I said, I'm going to lean on Jesus. Even if I can't feel his presence, even if he never talks to me again, and even if I stay in this prison for the rest of my life, I am going to rejoice and be glad because my reward is in heaven. See, the Bible says this, Romans 5, and not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. James says, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but pure joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and that you may be complete, lacking in nothing. Jesus sat on the mountainside and told the people that was following him, let me tell you, if you're going to follow me, what's going to happen? Paul was beheaded, Andrew was crucified, Peter was crucified upside down because he didn't think he was even worthy to be crucified like Jesus, Philip was cruelly put to death, Matthew was either stabbed to death or martyred in Ethiopia, Bartholomew was martyred, James was clubbed to death, Simon was killed, Matthew and Andrew were burned to death. And the only one we think that might have died like each of us pray that will die is just a natural death. What do you think they thought? Andrew committed himself to God's spiritual discipline. This is what he said he did. This is a manner of obeying Jesus' words, said Andrew. I began every day to set aside five minutes, and I would start out by saying, I repent that I have not been joyful because you commanded me to be joyful. I am sorry. I repent. Please forgive me. Now I'm going to perform an act of joy. I don't feel like it, but look at my action. This is a step of obedience. I am going to be glad before you in these terrible circumstances. I'm separated from my wife and children. I don't know what the future is. I'm isolated in prison, but I'm going to rejoice. Then I would dance and hop around, he said. It was not a very good dance, but I'd hop, I'd leap, I'd dance before God every day as a discipline. So I ask you, brothers and sisters in Christ, fellow John Knoxers, what are you suffering from? Can you try, can we try, can we pray and ask the Holy Spirit, whatever we're going through, that we can say, I'm going to rejoice and be glad because my reward is is in heaven. Maybe if you pray, God will say, you know what? You've suffered for me. Right now in this particular season of your life or these years of your life, I'm not going to ask you to, if you will, suffer for me. I want you to just have a season of blessing. You know? I mean, if you go back and look at your life, haven't you seen like some seasons are really good and then some seasons might be bad and, you know, it's kind of this mountain up and down. I don't know. Maybe are you willing to suffer by beginning to tithe here at John Knox Presbyterian Church? That would be suffering for many of us, wouldn't it? To say, I'm going to commit to obey your word 
I'm going to give 10% of everything you give me back. Maybe, maybe God will call you to suffer by praying for three people that you can share God's love with and that you're willing to take your time, your precious time, so they can know Jesus. I don't know what it might be. Maybe God's calling you to serve in a specific ministry. Maybe like Angela said, I have a voice, but it's not so good. And if I sing, maybe, maybe it won't be the best. I don't know. But I thought we'd pray. There's a book that I'm reading. I encourage my friend Mike and say this is my buddy Mike from seventh grade. Me and Mike have known each other uh, for years and years, and he's up visiting, and I'm glad he's here. Thanks for being here, Brother Mike. Uh, I'm reading a book called God's Hostage. I got it on Kindle. It's the story about this man, Andrew, and how he made it through. Andrew said, I was broke in prison. At one of his lowest points, Andrew said, what came out of my own mouth surprised me. They weren't words of petition. They weren't words of lament. They weren't words of complaining to God. Simply what came out of my mouth was, I said, I love you, Jesus. Let's pray. God, as we come to you this morning, only you know what is in store for our lives until we see you face to face. So, Lord, I'd like to take a moment of silence, and maybe I can get Angela to play just a little bit of quiet music, and I'd like us just to sit here for just a few minutes and be open to what God might be talking to you about. Uh, maybe hear the voice of the Lord for ourselves. Let's go to the Lord and listen. God, I pray that as we're sitting, if there's something that you're calling us to do, will you help us to understand what that might be? We pray, God, for your grace and your encouragement that whatever it is or isn't, that we could obey and rejoice and be glad knowing that you know what we're going through and that one day we'll look back and we'll see why you allowed it and we'll be thankful and we'll understand that you're a good, good God. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for suffering a cruel death. Help us to live a life that's honoring and pleasing to you in all ways that we can, the best we can. And forgive us when we fall short. It's in the powerful name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Angela. Our closing hymn, Great Are You, Lord. Will you stand and let's praise the Lord together.
Thank you. It's wonderful to know that God loves us and God will be with us in our mountaintop experiences and in our valley experiences. But no, God promises I'll never leave you. I'll never, ever forsake you. Have a great Sunday. Amen. And all the earth will shout so